you're shown here on your entertainment news with an icon, a thrillingly glamorous lady, the one and only Rula Lenska, who tells us all about her latest play and, of course, her fantastic career to date. Remember, though, Rula, if you miss it, yep. if you miss it, you miss out. <laughs> Don't miss the glamorous and gorgeous Rula today on your entertainment news. Ruler, it's a real thrill to see you. Oh. Tell me about your new play. What's it called and what do you play in it? It's called Lingua Franca. It's written by Peter Nichols. It's set in Florence in the early 50s after the Second World War. And basically it's a language shop. We're teaching um, English to foreign, well, to Italian students. But there is an Australian teacher with a very strong Australian accent. I play a Russian Jewess married to an anti-fascist Italian. So there are all sorts of accents supposedly teaching the Queen's English to Italian students, which is a funny concept in itself. Um, the play is multi-leveled. There's age versus youth, there's history, there's love, there's drama, there's emotion. And it's set in this sweaty little green room of this uh, language shop in Florence. And of course, we're playing it at the Finborough Theatre, which is upstairs of a pub, swelteringly hot, both for the actors and for the audience. So it imbues the show with a very necessary atmosphere, although at times it can become distinctly uncomfortable. <laughs> but it's, um, it's a really well cast, even though I say so myself, and uh, the actors are great. The piece is part stylistic, part naturalistic. And uh, from what I've heard from people, it's had some very good reports and people love it. Cracking reviews that are in the, the press this week, in fact. Um, you know, a, a lot of actors say they don't read them, but when they're great, you must be tempted to have a think, oh, thank goodness. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's, it's a frightening thing. If you read the reviews, you know, and if they're nice, you get complacent. If they're bad, then you get scared. <laughs> yeah. So I don't actually think it does one any favours as an actress reading the reviews, but it's always nice to hear that they're good. Natalie, lovely to see you. What do you play? It's a bit of a posh title, that, isn't it? It is. What do you play in that? Tell us the sort of storyline behind the play. Well, um, it's about a language school set in Florence in the 1950s. So it's lovely costumes and everything. Um, the main story, um, there's lots of different things that happen, but the main story is that there's a girl called Peggy and she's an English teacher and she falls in madly in love with the main guy called Stephen Flowers. Um, and he doesn't fancy her at all. In fact, he fancies my character. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. Uh, called Heidi, who's a German teacher. And um, Peggy, the English teacher, gets really, really upset about this and she goes uh, madder and madder uh, throughout the play. And then, um, well, you'll have to come and see it to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like, I suppose, I like stories like that because then basically it's, it's got a female angle, isn't it, of to like what happens when one wins and when one doesn't. <laughs> I suppose know? it could be, a, a, I don't think it's particularly female, uh, but, <laughs> it, but yes, yes, I mean, anybody could go that mad, presumably, if their love is unrequited. We've all it? been there. <laughs> In London recently, we saw all these lovely elephants placed all over. Uh, re I mean, strange places, really, where you're like, why is it there, <laughs> you know? I saw one outside Grosvenor House, there was one in Notting Hill, all over London. What was it about, and, and tell us about how it, you know, your involvement and what we did. Well, I've been passionate about elephants, um, seriously passionate for the last 35 years. It started with narrating the life story of a lady called Daphne Sheldrick, who runs an elephant orphanage outside of Nairobi. And I just became, I fell in love with them. And I've been very conservation minded for a long time. I was one of the founder members of the Born Free Foundation. Um, and interspersed with the charity work and the visits to Africa and India and places like that, I've come across Mark Shand many times, who wrote two wonderful books called Travels of My Elephant and Queen of the Elephants. And uh, he said that he was setting up this big charity which is going to which was going to make London notice and he outlined this idea of putting 258 hand decorated elephants all over the center of town for six weeks some of them sponsored by, sponsored by companies some of them sponsored by individuals then they were going to disappear overnight as if they'd gone extinct and amass in a herd 
at the, then we didn't know which park, but it was the Royal Hospital Park off the embankment. And we're raising money to open old migratory channels, which the elephants have used for centuries in India, in Kerala in particular, where now, because of human encroachment, those migratory channels have been closed off. You can't move elephants, but you can move people. Mm. So all the money that has been raised, and it's over four million to date, from two live auctions in the park and the rest on the net, is going to move the little villages that are in the elephant's way out of their way so that the elephants will no longer destroy their crops and occasionally kill people and their age-long migratory channel will reopen. And I think this is a wonderful idea. I'm glad you've explained that because I did wonder where they've gone. You're right, they just went overnight. And you think, well, they're not easy to shift, <laughs> you know. And you're thinking, well, who could have possibly run off with them, you know? And there they were airlifted into the into the final place. And I have to say, the sight of 250 of those elephants in, in rows on a balmy Sunday evening, incense and candlelight, and lots of gloriously glamorous women in saris, was something to take your breath away. Apart from your lovely play right now. If you could find a role, or somebody was to ring you up now and say, Natalie, we've offered you this dream role. Is it a part that, because that, you're only young, but is it a part that you still want to play <laughs> and that you're hoping at some point in your career you're going to get it? What is it? Well, um, I really enjoyed working at the Royal Shakespeare Company last year, so I think that I would love to do The Taming, the Taming of the Shrew, play Kate in that, because that's an absolutely wonderful part. Um, tough part though. Very it, tough yeah. and that's a challenge, it's always good to have a challenge and um, uh, I'm also writing my own sitcom at the moment so I'd love to, I'd love to do something like that. I've always, I love sitcoms. I <laughs> and, know, but when you say that writing that, I mean do, do you sit in a room <clears> on your own and... I've been writing it with a friend. I was going to say because what makes you laugh when you sit on your own? Exactly, you exactly. Go, that's not funny. No. <laughs> I don't think I could write it yeah. on my own but it's good fun writing with a friend. It's and then are you going to pitch that to TV and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I just, I just, um, I love doing comedies. I'd love to do maybe American comedies, or you know, they're, they're very good at them, aren't they? <laughs> it, 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 they make it look easy. Exactly. And, and that's yeah. the art of it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we will come along and see you at your wonderful play. Sounds, Thank you. of course, splendid. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.